Hey, Math 30-2. Today we're going to look at exponential form and logarithmic form. All right, quick review. Last section we learned the difference between a logarithmic function and how it's an inverse of an exponential function. For example, the exponential function y equals 2 to the x has the inverse of x equals 2 to the y, and that's the same as saying y equals the log of x base 2. So an exponential function with a base of b has this equation, y equals a times b to the x. We've got these restrictions. a cannot equal 0, b must be greater than 0, and b can equal 1. A logarithmic function with a base of b has the equation y equals the log of x base b. We've got these restrictions. x must be greater than 0, b must be greater than 0, and b can never equal 1. Note that the inside of the logarithm is called the argument. All right. And the base of the logarithm is the same as the base of our exponential function, both bases of b. And the value of the logarithm is y. Recall the common logs. Use the common log button on our calculators, and they always have a base of 10. So y equals log of x base 10 is often written as y equals the log of x. So without a base written, it's understood to be base 10. All right, And y equals log x and y equals 10 to the x are inverse functions. Natural logarithms use a natural log key. They have a base of e. So y equals log of x base e is written as a, y equals the natural logarithm of e. You can check those out in your calculator. All right. All right, last unit we investigated the graphs of y equals 2 to the x and y equals the log of x base 2 using tables of values, plotting the points, and extending the graphs. So we'll use the tables and the graphs to investigate statements in exponential form and in logarithmic form. So the graph of y equals 2 to the x is given right here. The graph of y equals the log of x base 2 is given right here. We're told they're inverses of each other. All right. Notice that the points, the point 38 on the graph y equals 2 to the x, which is right here. When x is 3, y is 8. That's up there. Indicates that when y is 8, x is 3. So 2 cubed should equal 8. That's true. The point 8, 3 on the graph of y equals the log of x base 2 is right here. 8, 3 would be right about there. What that means is that when y is 3, x is 8. So if we read part A here, what statement can be made from the point negative 2, 1 quarter in the graph of y equals 2 to the exponent x? Well, we can say when y is a quarter, x should be negative 2. So does 1 quarter equal 2 to the negative 2? Yeah, that's a true statement. All right. What statement can be made from the point 16, 4 in the graph of y equals the log of x base 2? Well, again, when y is 4, that says that x is supposed to equal 16. So the log of 16 base 2 should equal 4. If you look in the graph, that's a true statement. Complete the table below showing statements in exponential form and in logarithmic form. So we can see that the log of 8 base 2 equals 3 can be written as 8 equals 2 cubed. So log of 4 base 2, well, if I write this out, the base of the logarithm should be the base of our power. So 2 to some exponent should equal 4. So we can figure out what that exponent is. That exponent should be 2. So 2 squared should equal 4. Therefore, the log of 4 base 2 should equal 2. The log of 2 base 2 should equal what? Well, again, the, log of our, the base of our log is 2. And that whole thing should equal 2. So 2 to what exponent equals 2? Unless 2 to the first. So log of 2 base 2 is 1. Log of 1 base 2, what does that equal? Well, if I write this in exponential form, 
the base of the log is 2, the base of our power is 2, 2 to some exponent should equal 1, well, we recognize 2 to the 0 should equal 1, so the log of 1 base 2 is 0. So if we see this pattern, let's complete this table. Log of 1 8 base 2, well, if 1 8 equals 2 to the negative 3, then this whole thing should equal negative 3. If I want to rewrite 1 quarter equals 2 to the negative 2, then I'd write this as the log base 2 of 1 quarter should equal negative 2. And the last one, log base 2 of 1 half should equal negative 1. All right. So use the patterns to develop uh, developed from the last example to write the following exponential statements in logarithmic form. So the log of my power is, uh, sorry, the base of my power is 10. I should write the base of my logarithm as 10 as well. I like to remember that a logarithm equals an exponent. So the log of 10,000 base 10 should equal the exponent 3. All right. Part 2, the logarithm has a base of 3 because the power has a base of 3. Therefore, the log of 81 equals an exponent of 4. So the log of 81 base 3 equals 4. Going backwards, then going the other direction, write the logarithmic statements in exponential form. Well, the base of the logarithm is 5, so the base of my power is 5. I said that a logarithm really is just equaling an exponent, so 5 to the 4th equals 625. And over here, the base of our logarithm is 10, so the base of our power is 10. So 10 squared would equal 100 is another way to write that. So a logarithmic equation, y equals the log of x base b, can be expressed in exponential form as x equals b to the exponent y. They're the same thing. They're equivalent. And y equals b to the x can also be expressed as x equals the log of y base b. So let's do some conversions. Convert the following from logarithmic form to exponential form. So the base of the logarithm is 7. The base of the power is 7. All to the exponent 4 should equal x. That means the same thing. 4 equals the log of x. Well, the base of the logarithm is 10, so the base of my power is 10. Therefore, 10 to the 4th should equal x. Part C, the base of the log is 5. The base of my power is 5. 5 to the y equals 15. And part D, the base of the logarithm is 10. The base of my power is t, sorry. All to the m should equal the argument b. Convert the exponential ones to logarithmic ones. The base of the exponent is 4. So the base of our logarithm is 4. And so the log of 64 base 4 should equal the exponent 3. Part b, the base of our power is 2. The base of our logarithm should be 2. So the log of 1 8th base 2 should equal negative 3. The base of our power is e. The base of our log should be e. So the log of f base e would equal the exponent d. Using logarithmic form and exponential form to solve equations. All right. So now we're taking it to the next step. In each case, express the log equation as an exponential equation and then solve for x. So the log of x base 6 equals 4. Well, the base of the log is 6. The base of my power is 6. So 6 to the 4th equals x. Well, that's pretty straightforward. We know the value for x then is 6 to the 4th. Work that out. That's 1296. Looking at part b, the base of the logarithm is b. So the base of our power is b. So b squared should equal 144. Well, in order to find out what b is, we would take both these to the exponent 1 half, or the reciprocal of the exponents that's, that is there. So b squared to the 1 half means b to the 2 times a half, which is b to the first. So we've solved for b. 1 half means square root, so b is the square root of 144. So b should be 12. Part c, base of the log is b, the base of the power is b to the 3 halves should equal 125. So just like we solved the last example, I want to find b to the first, so I'm going to take the reciprocal power 
of the left side and do the same thing to the right side. B to the 3 halves, all to the 2 thirds gives me B to the first. 125 to the 2 thirds means the cube root of 125 all squared. Now you could try that on your calculator or you could remember that the cube root of 125 is 5 and 5 squared is 25. And finally part D, base of the log is 36, so the base of our power is 36, the exponent y should equal 6. And we solved some exponential equations by writing these with the same bases. So 36 is the same as 6 squared, all to the y. And my rule says keep my base and multiply the exponents when I've got a power raised to an exponent. Remember this is 6 to the first. I've got equal bases, so I can now equate my exponents. 2 to the y should equal 1, and divide both sides by 2, so y is 1 half. All right, page 256, by converting the logarithmic form to exponential form, calculate the value of t. So the log of x base 2 is equal to 3, write that in exponential form, 2 cubed should equal x, or 8 is x. Now that I know what x is, I can plug that value in for x. So the log of t base 2 should equal x, but we just solved x to equal 8. So that equals 8. Now we write this in exponential form. Base of 2 to the exponent 8 should equal t. And we know that 2 to the 8th is 256. So the value of t is 256. Same thing for part b. Log of x base 5 equals 2. So the base of 5 exponent of 2 equals x. So x is 25. Now that I know what x is, I can substitute that into my second equation. The log of x, well, x we just found out to be 25. Base t equals negative 2. Write this in exponential form. Base of t to the exponent negative 2 should equal 25. And how do I get rid of that exponent negative 2? Well, I take the reciprocal power, so negative 1 half, to both sides of this equation. So keep my base of t and multiply negative 2 times negative 1 half. I did that on purpose, so the power of t is 1. So I solve for t. 25 to the negative 1 half would be 1 over the square root of 25. So t is equal to 1 fifth. Logarithmic form of y equals a times b to the x, so a little change. We've been just dealing with b to the x. We're going to throw in the coefficient a and see what happens. We've changed from exponential form y equals b to the x to logarithmic form log of y base b equals x. Now consider to write how to write the ex exponential form of y equals a times b to the x in logarithmic form. So it tells us what to do. Step one, let's isolate the power b to the x by dividing both sides by a. So now I've got b to the x by itself on one side of the equation. Once I've got that, I can change it into logarithmic form. So let's rewrite this in logarithmic form. The base of my power is b, so the base of my logarithm should also be b. I'm going to take the log of y over a, all to the base b will equal the exponent x. All right. So let's change each of the following from exponential form to logarithmic form. Step one, get our power by itself. So isolate 3 to the x by dividing both sides of this equation by 2. And now we can change this into logarithmic form. Log base 3 of y over 2 will equal the exponent x. Same thing with part b. Step one, isolate the base of of, or sorry, isolate the power 4 to the exponent k by dividing both sides by 7. h over 7 would equal 4 to the k. And then it changes into logarithmic form. Log base 4 of h over 7 should equal the exponent k. And finally, part c. Divide both sides by r. So we've got t over r equals s to the p. So we've isolated our power with base of s. Write it in logarithmic form. Log base s of t over r 
would equal the exponent p. Example 8. Change each of the following from logarithmic to exponential form. And they want that form to be y equals a times b to the exponent x. So I've got it in logarithmic form. Let's write it in exponential form. 7 to the exponent x would equal y over 3. But I want it in the form y equals a times b to the x. So I want to solve this equation for y. So I multiply both sides by 3. So 3 times 7 to the x would equal y. So our a value is 3 and our b value is 7. x is the exponent. y is the value of the exponential function. Part b. Change this into an exponential form. Base of 5 to the exponent x would equal 7y. This time, y is being multiplied by 7. The opposite of multiplying by 7 is dividing by 7. So we'd have 5 to the exponent x all over 7 equals y. That would be fine. If I asked you what's the value of a in the equation in that form, you should tell me that a is 1 7th. So I could write this as 1 7th times 5 to the x equals y. So you should recognize both those equations as being equal. They may show up on a multiple choice question in either form. Finally, c. The base of the logarithm is e. So e to the x should equal y over 8. And solving for y, I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. So 8 times e to the x would equal y. All right. You guys have your assignment. Where you go.